In this post, we look at uh, Linux's time command. Uh, time helps us to measure uh, system resource usage of other operations uh, or other commands. So the syntax for it is time space uh, the command. Uh, so before we uh, jump into time, uh, there are two implementations of time. Uh, one is uh, the shell's internal implementation. Uh, the other is GNU time command. To figure out which one we are invoking with the command, we can do uh, type space time and type tells us that uh, the command is a shell keyword. So uh, every time we use just the time command, we are actually invoking shell's implementation of time. Uh, now let's use uh, the time command to see uh, how it is uh, used and uh, also see the difference between uh, shell's implementation and gnu's uh, implementation if we look at the current w directory there is an application image file that has been downloaded from the internet and let's say that we want to calculate the sha256 sum on this uh, file and we want to measure the time it takes to do that operation so for that we we say time space the command that we want to use which is SHA-256 sum and the file name. So what this tells us is the first line is the output of SHA-256 sum and the rest is uh, the output from time which is a measurement on the time it took for that command to execute. The first one is the wall time that is the total time. The second one is the time spent in the user space and the third is the time spent in the kernel space or the uh, or doing system calls now if we if we want to invoke uh, gnu's time command uh, to be sure that we are using gnu's command we use the absolute path of that command slash user slash bin slash time uh, again uh, space uh, the command that we want to execute and we give it now uh, in GNU's version, we get some additional information about virtual memory and how much of the CPU that particular command got. Now, instead of looking at the output like this, uh, GNU's version uh, has the option to display the output in verbose mode. So that is dash V. So if we do that, uh, we get a more uh, readable uh, version of the output. Now instead of showing the output onto the screen let's say that we want to store it in a file for uh, future reference uh, gnu's version has that uh, support so we use the dash o and we specify the path to a file uh, where time should uh, store that resource usage detail so let's say that we want to store the details into uh, slash slash temp slash uh, sha256 some usage let's say that's the uh, output file and we can see that um, time did not um, show us the output the output has gone into that particular file and we can use it in the future and it has the um, usage details now that's uh, the time in shells implementation and uh, gnu's version of time uh, we can, we can also use it uh, to measure or get, get an idea of um, things like extracting tar files. Now let's uh, quickly look at that example. So slash user slash bin slash time. We want the verbose mode and we are extracting a, a tar file. And the file is Apache's JMeter tar file and we want that to be extracted into that particular folder so what's happening here is uh, tar is going to extract the file from that archive uh, file specified by that archive uh, and it is going to uh, first change into that uh, slash temp directory uh, and then uh, do the extraction so that the, uh, the extracted folder is in that uh, particular directory and time is going to measure uh, tar throughout this and it is going to give us the output in verbose mode. So if we do this, uh, we can see the output for the same. Uh, notice that there is some changes in the file system uh, measurements. So because it involves um, writing data uh, to the file system. Now that's uh, the time command. Um, 
to measure system resource usage. That's it.